Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, let's say a word of prayer, and we're going to go into the prophetic word for today. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your kindness. I thank you for your grace and for your mercy. Uh, I surrender to your God as you breathe through me on this broadcast, oh God, so that you can uh, have your way, so that you might be glorified, so that the people might be edified, so that hell will be horrified, oh God, that unbelievers would be challenged to believe in you, oh God, and that the word you want forth, that you want to go forth will come forth because it will not come back to you void. Thank you for this opportunity and this privilege to be used of your God, so breathe through me and I surrender my whole self to your God so you can speak to me as you see fit. Uh, thank you for it and I believe you for it in Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Today's live prophetic word is mining. Today's live prophetic word is mining. Mining. What do you mean by mining? Well, let's look at, uh, I know y'all looking at me, Periscope, I keep moving my phone. Let's look at the definition of mining. Okay. Mining is the extraction of valuable minerals or other geological matters from the earth usually from an ore, body, an iota, vein, seam, reef, or place of deposits. These deposits form a mineralized package that is of economic interest to the miner. Ores recovered by mining include metals, coal, oil, shale, gemstones, limestone, chalk, dimension stone, rock salt, potash, gravel, and clay. Mining is required to obtain any material that cannot be grown through agricultural processes or feasibly created artificially in a laboratory or a factory. Mining in a wider sense includes extraction of any non-renewable source, such as petroleum, natural gas, or even water. Okay, so that's what mining is. Okay. That's what mining is, okay? So, the question becomes, what does that have to do with what the Lord is saying to us today? And for that, we have to look at our scripture references, okay? A script, scripture references for today, we're going to start with 1 Corinthians 3, uh, 11 and 12. 1 Corinthians 3, 11 and 12. Now, if you don't know anything about... First Corinthians, you need to understand that uh, it's an epistle. An epistle is a, a fancy word for letter, and it's a letter to the people at Corinth. You need to understand what Corinth was. Corinth was the carnal capital of the Roman Empire in Paul's day. It's what they call sin, the sin center, or what we might call sin city, uh, but it's a little bit bigger than Vegas, okay? Uh, it had a funny name. Uh, one of the nicknames was Vanity Fair, if you can believe that. That's where that phrase comes from in English. About 40 miles west of Athens on a narrow isthmus between Peloponnesus and the mainland. Okay. Great commercial center of the Roman Empire, three harbors. Uh, and uh, it was into all kinds of carnality. They worshiped the Greek pantheon of gods. They made sacrifices. They had orgies. They had drunk orgies. They believe, again, in a polytheistic system. And so for them, for anybody at Corinth, life was about and life was like being as carnal as you could and showing the carnal gods like the Greek god of wine or Aphrodite, the god of love, how you worship them by being like them, getting as lit as you could, having as much sex as you could, or okay, whatever. These are those people. These are the Corinthians. These people got saved and had to come out of that system. And so they are writing to ask Paul, basically, how do we live now? Now that we're Christians, how do we live? Okay, since we're not supposed to be living the old way that we lived before, how do we live now? That's what Corinthians is about. That's uh, what they wrote to Paul about, is to help understanding the new Christian lifestyle, because the Christian lifestyle wasn't anything like the old lifestyle they were coming out of, the Greek orgies, the wine, the polytheistic system, the living kernel, that whole thing. Okay, so 
that's the backdrop. Uh, just a short recap of the backdrop of Corinth and who these people were. Okay, so we're going to read 1 Corinthians 3, 11 and 12. Verse 11, for no one can lay a foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw. I'm going to go ahead and read verse 13. His workmanship will be evident because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire and the fire will prove the quality of each man's work. That's the Berean Study Bible. Let me read those three verses again. For no one can lay a foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, his workmanship will be evident because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire and the fire will prove the quality of each man's work. Those verses are deep and intense, okay? So what I want to focus on is the overall theme, and we're going to zoom in on the gold, silver, precious stones part. But overall, what Paul is saying here is that God's kingdom is built on the foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it says, for no one can lay a foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. So that's why the Lord is the only entrance into the kingdom of God. You can't get into God's kingdom apart from Jesus. And if you try, it's like the Lord said, you are a thief and a robber. Because the Lord says, no one comes to the Father but by him. So you are indeed uh, a thief and a robber if you try to lay any other foundation other than the foundation of Christ. But then it goes on to say, if anyone builds, if anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw. Now that verse is extremely deep. Uh, what that means is that once you get saved and once you get born again, okay, it's up to you to find the tools that you're going to build your life with. Okay, now it's not that God doesn't give you the tools that he wanted, but you still have a choice. Because all Christians do not build their Christian life the same way. The Bible says it here. So if you build on the foundation of Christ, if you build your anything based on Christ, that's the right foundation. You can't lay another foundation. So if you're trying to say anything is of God and it's not founded on Christ, it's not from God and you're not in the kingdom. But if you build on that foundation, it says using gold, silver, or precious stones. Okay? So that's talking about the precious metals. Okay? And then precious stones are talking about the, you know, beryl, amethyst, onyx, Crystals, diamonds, rubies, jaspers, emeralds, things like that. We're going to read some of that a little bit later. But it also say you can, it says you can build using wood or hay or straw. Okay? Wood or hay or straw. What does that mean? That means you can build your life on wood or hay or straw. And the Bible says that in verse 13 that your workmanship is going to be evident because the day is going to bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will prove the quality of each man's work. That happens in this life, and that happens in the life to come. A lot of people are surprised when they go through a trial by fire. That's a lot of what 2020 has been for a lot of us. It's been a trial by fire. And a lot of Christians are absolutely surprised that they go through a trial by fire. But the Bible tells you right here in 1 Corinthians 3, it tells you right here that your work is going to be tried, okay? And the day is going to bring it to light. That's not just in judgment. That's not just after you die. That's now because everything in the Word of God is now, okay? And it says that the your workmanship will be evident. So if you took the time to seek the Lord and ask Him for the gold, the silver, the precious stones, and you build with that. Gold, silver, and precious stones are going to stand in judgment. They're going to stand in fire. Do you know why? Because they've already been tried by fire. <laughs> Gold and silver and precious stones have already been tried by fire. That's why they can stand through the fire. That's one of the things, that's one of the reasons that you'll discover when you get in trouble, when you get confused, 
when you get in situations where you don't know what's going on, you know, or what you can do, you can always go back to your foundation. You can always go back to the reason you got saved in the first place. You can always go back to the first scriptures that you learned. You can always go back to the fundamentals because they will always stand. It doesn't matter what else is going on around you, okay? Because gold, silver, and precious stones have already been tried by the fire. They've already been tried by the fire. But if you build with wood or hay or straw, what's going to happen when you apply fire to wood or hay or straw? What's going to happen? What's going to happen is that they're going to burn up. Okay? That happens to your life now. That will happen to your life in eternity. If you go through the fire and your life is built on nothing but wood, it's going to burn up. If you go through the fire and your life is built on nothing but hay, it's going to burn up. If you go through the fire and your life is built on nothing but straw, okay, you like the scarecrow from the Wizard of Oz, you ain't made of nothing but straw, it's going to burn up. That's on purpose. That happens on purpose because your work has to be tried. Okay? 2020 has been the trying fire for a lot of people. Okay? A lot of people, whether they are real with Christ or not, whether they love the Lord or not, whether or not they're committed to serving him, regardless of circumstances, uh, can you serve God in a period of time where you don't fully understand everything that's going on? Can you serve God where people around you are dying? Maybe someone close to you has died. Can you serve God regardless of the circ circumstances? See, that's a trial by fire because anybody can serve God when things are well. Anybody can serve God when things are easy. Anybody can serve God where everything's plentiful. What do you do in a year of uh, like 2020 where well, there's a global pandemic, where the economy is bad, where there's sickness everywhere, where it's re reaching to the highest people, where it's striking people down with no respect to a person? Can you serve God then? What if it's hit your family? Can you serve God then? See, that's why what's happening is so many people's lives are being burned up and so many, so many people's lives are crumbling because they're just... Wood, hay, and straw. They're just wood, hay, and straw. They're just wood, hay, and straw. They're just wood, hay, and straw. That's why they're being burned up. That's why a lot of people aren't making it. That's why a lot of people are crumbling. That's why a lot of people aren't making it through. Do you understand? Because what they built in their Christian life ain't never wood, hay, and straw. If you want to stand through the trial by fire, you have to build with gold, silver, and precious stones, as the scripture says, because your workmanship is going to be evident. The day will bring it to light. The fire is going to try it, and the fire will prove the quality of each man's work. You can't get around that because it's in the word. That's in this life and the life to come. So that's why you see a whole lot of believers that don't make it through fiery trial seasons because they only want to serve God when things are well. Okay. So I'm going to come back to that because there's some other stuff I want to focus on. But I also want to look at some other scriptures. Okay, I want to look at 1 Chronicles 29, 1 through 3. I want to look at 1 Chronicles 29, 1 through 3. Now, if just to give you a little bit of background on Chronicles. Chronicles was most likely written by Ezra because a lot of the Hebrew and a lot of the, the, the writing style in the Hebrew used a similarity similar to Ezra and Nehemiah. A lot of people think that the Bible is being redundant when you see Chronicles and Kings, but it, it actually is giving you a principle because uh, the Bible does that a lot. Uh, many of the details that were omitted or missed or given in a general point of view I reviewed later in a different book. That's what happens in Genesis 1 and 2. In the book of Genesis, we get an overall view of the creation week of Genesis chapter 1. But in Genesis chapter 2, we get a view that zooms in on specific details that weren't there in Genesis chapter 1. That's what a lot of people don't understand the Bible structure that way. Well, that's what Chronicles is to Kings. Kings gives you an overall point of view, and Kings is also from man's point of view. Kings is from a governmental point of view. 
Chronicles is much more from the Lord's point of view, much more from a spiritual or religious life point of view. And Chronicles gives details that Kings does not, if you didn't know that. Okay, just to give you a little background. So we're going to read 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verses 1 through 3. This is King David talking as he's about to die. Then King David said to the whole assembly, My son Solomon, the one whom God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. The task is great because this palace is not for man but for the Lord God. So David was getting the resources together to build the temple because God told him that he wasn't going to build a temple, but he was getting the resources together. Now with all my ability, I have made provision for the house of my God, gold for the gold articles, silver for the silver, bronze for the bronze, iron for the iron, and wood for the wood, as well as, a, as, well as onyx for the settings, turquoise, stones of various colors, all kinds of precious stones and slabs of marble, all in abundance. Then in verse 3, King David says, Moreover, because of my delight in the house of my God, I now give for it my personal treasures of gold and silver, over and above all that I have provided for this holy temple. Okay? Over and above all that I have provided for this holy temple. So David said, not only am I giving all of that that I've already gathered, but David said, I'm going to give my personal treasures. David said, I'm going to go into my accounts. And for my accounts, my treasures of gold and silver, David said he's going to give that. So King David literally didn't hold anything back from God. That's why his name is so blessed. That's why his memory is blessed. That's why uh, God bless him in his timeline and his family and his generation so much. Okay? All right. But what I want to focus on is the fact that David said, gold for the gold articles, silver for the silver, bronze for the bronze, iron for the iron, wood for the wood, as well as onyx for the settings, turquoise, stones of various colors, all kinds of precious stones and slabs of marble in abundance. And then he says, my personal treasures of gold and silver. So let's tie that back into 1 Corinthians 3, 11, 12, and 13, which we, what we just read about uh, building the kinds of things you're trying to build. If you build wood things, again, they're temporal things. There's nothing wrong with temporal things, but you need to understand the difference between temporal things and eternal things. In the context of what I'm talking about, a lot of temporal things is denominationalism, it's religion, it's traditions of men. Stuff like that is just wood or hay or straw. Because there's nothing wrong with wood, a lot of things made out of wood, but wood's not going to stand against fire. So in other words, there are some things that you build with, even if you build with purpose on wood, wood is good for what good wood is good for, but it's not going to stand the test of fire. It's temporary, it's going to rot eventually, or it's going to burn. But gold and silver and precious stones will not. They will not. Okay? So, what am I talking about and what is the Holy Ghost trying to get through us today? Because the prophetic word for today is mining. Okay? So, why is that relevant? I'll tell you why. Because God is issuing a challenge and a commandment and setting something before us today to tell us to give us a chance to build our lives on gold and silver and precious stones. God has given us a chance to build our lives on something that is going to last for eternity. Why is that important on October 4th of 2020? I'll tell you why it's important. It's important because God has torn down and burned up all the old stuff that wasn't about nothing. I've discovered, because I talked to one of my friends about it, a fellow prophet, I've discovered that a lot of people, a lot of religious people are not getting the point of everything that's happened in 2020, okay? God has torn down all that stuff we were doing, all that stuff that we, we, was we were doing based on racism, because the scripture says, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of thieves. Uh, if you built your ministry on r racism, we don't let those people in here. Uh, if you built your ministry on ignoring certain scriptures because you don't like them, because a lot of people that don't consider themselves Pentecostal or charismatic, and those of you listening to me on the podcast, I'm doing air quotes as I say that, Pentecostal or charismatic, they say, you know, we don't speak in tongues, we don't prophesy, we don't do that. That's not in the Bible. The Bible says to desire spiritual gifts, yea, rather that ye may prophesy, ye Pentecostals, that ain't in there. Ye black people, that's not in there. That's to Christians. 
But if you built an entire ministry or denomination talking about we don't do that, God tore all that down. Okay? We, we don't even worship like we used to. We can't even gather like we used to. Do you know why? Because all of the old systems, everything that was built on wood, hay, and straw, God set it on fire and God tore it down in 2020. It's all gone now. Okay? What God is issuing us a challenge for and what God is giving us an opportunity to do is to build with gold and silver and precious stones. In other words, the stuff that is actually in the scripture, the stuff that's important to the Lord. The stuff that's important to the Lord because only what you do for Christ will last and only the stuff that's important to the Lord is going to make it through the fire. Do you understand that? That's what 2020 has been about. Not the only thing, but that's been one of the main things is the fire, the fire of God purging, purging out anything that's not like him, purging out anything that he's not pleased with, purging out anything that is not what he wanted. And I have discovered that so many believers have completely missed that point. They've completely missed that boat. They just don't get it. Okay? So you need to understand that we have an incredible opportunity. Everybody that's alive, that wants to make it forward, that wants to stay alive and keep going forward in 2020, you have an incredible opportunity to build in God's kingdom with gold and silver and precious stones. If you don't take advantage of that opportunity and you continue to build wood, hay, and straw, understand that in the future, another 2020 will come. I don't know when that's going to happen. I don't know what it's going to look like. But what I do know is that your stuff going to go through the fire. It's not just going to be after you die, because many people preach this, that this only happens after you die. It does happen after you die, but it happens now. Okay? Is that in the Bible? Yes, it is. I will look it up and tell you, because it, it's in Peter. And I want to uh, give you the exact scripture. It's 1 Peter 4.12. A reading out of Brain Study Bible. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial that has come upon you as though something strange were happening to you. That word, a trial there means a putting to proof of good, experience of evil, solicitation, discipline, or provocation by implication, adversity. That word fiery means a burning trial, fiery test, uh, ignition, or smelting. Do you understand? So you put those two words together and it's talking about burning up, smelting, trying and testing so that the good in you can come forward. And so that the evil in you, laziness, wickedness, slowfulness, unbelief will be burned away. That happens in this life. First Peter 4.12, I just read it for you. That's not just after you die. That is what 2020 has been about on one level. That's not all, but that's what I'm trying to get you to understand. So if the, the challenge is that we have a chance to build with gold, silver, precious stones, and the challenge is that we have a chance to build on what's really important to the Lord, the question then becomes, what is that? Okay? <clears throat> what is that? What is the gold and silver and precious stones? What is the thing that we're supposed to be building on? What is the thing or the things that we're supposed to be focused on that will allow us to build the way the Lord wants us to build? Okay, so let me give you the first thing. I will give you the absolute first thing. Uh, that's found in Matthew 22. And I see I'm probably gonna need to do a backup follow-up teaching for this because it's very extensive. Okay, Matthew 22. We're going to start at verse 34, and we're going to go through verse 40. So Matthew chapter 22, the first book in the New Testament, uh, Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 through 40. 34 through 30. 40. <laughs> I said 30. 34 through 40. I'm sorry. <laughs> Matthew 22, uh, verses 34 through 40. And I'm reading out of the New King James. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him, Jesus, 
him, him as Jesus a question, testing him. There's the Lord being tested and saying, teacher, what is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, verse 39. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Check out verse 40, verse 40, verse 40. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Holy cow. So the Lord just gave us the, the clue. He just gave us the foundation. He just gave us the basics of everything that matters in his kingdom. And this is why it's unfortunate that as many people are going forward, they're not taking the time to show up their foundation or build on something that the Lord is doing. But I want to be wise. I want to be a wise prophet and I want to build on what the Lord said. So he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Okay. And in Luke and other versions, it also adds all your strength. So the first thing that God wants us to do is love him. The first thing that God wants us to do is love him. And not only does he want us to love him, he wants us to love him with all that we have. It says all your heart, okay? It says all your soul. And what is your heart? Your heart can mean many things. Your heart is your emotional center. Uh, your heart is also your inner man, your spirit, the deeper parts of you, because your spirit and your soul are not the same thing, okay? Uh, your, your heart is the inner workings of you, your sub-basement, way down where you really live. And then it says, oh, your soul, what is your soul? Your mind, your emotions, and your will. So everything that has to do with your mind, not just your brain, because your brain and your mind aren't the same thing. Your brain is the physical gray matter that regulates your body. Your mind is also spiritual because you can have a calm mind, a spiritual mind, a natural mind, an enlightened mind. Okay, so your mind and your brain are not synonymous, but but they are a part of your soul. Okay, your mind, your will, and your emotions, and then it says your body. I want to read it to you out of Mark chapter 12 because that adds the word strength. Uh, Starting in verse 28, and one of the scribes came, having heard them reason together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Mark says there's none of the commandment greater than these. So Matthew says, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Mark says there's none other commandment greater than these. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that your life is not going to count in the kingdom of heaven if you don't love the Lord. <laughs> there are a lot of people serving God. They're serving God, but they don't love him. Is such a thing possible? Yes. It's possible to do what your parents say and not love them. Some of y'all are closer to one parent than the other. That's entire, entirely possible. It's possible to do what your parents say, but you don't really love them, okay? It's impossible to be trying to be obedient to God because you're trying to get things from him. You, you sought his hand, you want his hand, but you never sought his face. You never sought his heart. You never wanted to find out who God was. Okay, you were only interested in what God could do for you. And that's not the same as having a relationship with him. Do you understand that? So the Lord already told you in the scripture that there's no other greater commandment than to love the Lord. So I want to build my life and I want to build my ministry on gold, silver, and precious stones. And the Lord said, the first thing we got to get right is do we love the Lord? Do we love him with all of our heart? Do we love him with all of our soul? Do we love him with all of our mind? And do we love him with all of our strength? Okay, what do you think about every day? Are you thinking about things 
that are in line with what the Lord says, as the scripture says, to be spiritually minded is life and peace, but the carnal mind is death. Okay, it says it the other way around, for the carnal mind is death, but the spiritual mind is life and peace, Romans 8, but you understand what I'm saying. So, do we love the, what do we think about every day? Where is your heart? Remember I told you that we're in a time of testing, we're in a time of purging, we're in a time of fire, so where is your heart? Is your heart in love with the Lord? Do you love the Lord like you did when you first got saved? Have you ever fallen in love with Jesus at all? Do you even know him? Because he said, loving him with all that we have is the first thing. It's the first commandment. It's the first commandment. And Mark says, there is no other commandment greater than these. And then he says, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So the second thing God wants you to do is love you. Oh, Prophet Taylor, you read that wrong. No, I didn't. He says, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That means you got to love you first. So the first thing God wants us to do is to love him. Love him with all that we have. The next thing God wants you to do right after that, see, because when you love God, you give him an opportunity to love you. When you're in his word, you'll be able to feel his love. When you're in his spirit, you'll be able to know his love. When you're in his presence, you'll be able to feel his love. And the Bible says we love him because he first loved us. That's why we have to put him first, to give him an opportunity to share his love with us. And as he continues to share his love with us, then we fall in love with him. Right after you learn how to love him, because he's first in all things, as you learn to love him, next person you got to learn to love is you. What do you mean by that, Prophet Taylor? I mean, you got to forgive yourself because God forgives you. Remember I talked about my motto, my motto, that if it's good enough for God, it's good enough for me. Okay, you shouldn't be holding grudges against yourself at 20 and at 30 years old. Lord have mercy, I could do a whole, I could do a whole lesson just on that. You shouldn't be holding grudges against yourself that are a 20 and a 30 years old. Because the scripture says, scripture says, I'm stuttering, the scripture says, okay, that if we can, 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God does not just forgive you of the sin. God actually wipes you clean from it, meaning you don't have to walk in it anymore. He doesn't just wipe the debt off your account with the blood of Jesus. He actually also cleanses you from it so you don't have to keep living that way. That's the whole promise. Because many times when people talk about and teach forgiveness, they talk about it and teach it like it's just God wiping the debt. It's not just wiping the debt. That's a part of it. But the blood of Jesus is applied to your account in heaven. And Father uses Jesus' blood, which he spread on the mercy seat, to literally wipe the debt off your account. But that's not all. Because 1 John 1, 9 says that the promise is also that he will cleanse you. Cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Do you understand what that means? That means that God will wipe that sin from your spirit, from you. Not your flesh, because your flesh ain't you. Because your flesh is corrupt, which is why you have to kill it every day. Your flesh is that old nature that we inherited from Adam, okay, that is with us in this mortal body as long as we're in this mortal body. It must be killed and crucified every day. That's your flesh. That's not you. Because God will actually cleanse you, your spirit, your inner man, to where God says you don't have to live that way anymore. You don't have to walk in that anymore. That's the person you're supposed to be loving. You're supposed to be forgiving yourself, receiving that cleansing, receiving that new life. Because the next person you've got to love is you. That's the proper order according to the scripture. See, so I'm going to build my life and I'm going to build my ministry on what God says because I want it to count. Because the Bible just told us that if we build it on wood, hay, and straw, uh, as we read that passage in Chronicles, King David said he's got wood for the wood things. Some things we do have to build out of wood, but they're temporal. Understand they're temporal, they're going to burn up. So that's why you want to be sure that you've also got that gold and silver and precious stones. So when you go through a fire, like 2020, or you go through the fire of judgment, like after you die, you're going to have something to show for your life. See, I want to have something to show for my life. I do not want my life to burn up. And it was wood, hay, and straw. It was all temporal. And when the fire gets applied to it, it all just gets wiped away. That's what's been happening to a lot of people this year. If you don't understand what's going on and why it's happening, that is what's been happening to a lot of people this year. They didn't understand that 2020 is a time of Because when 2020 came in, we kept talking about how it was a time of vision. It was a time of prophecy. It was a time of realizing your vision. It was a time of all of that, which is true. But I know a lot of us didn't understand that along with that was going to come to fire. 
along with that was going to come the purging. Along with that was going to come the uh, fire of God to purge away, to strip away, to burn away all the things that are temporal, all the things that are wood, hay, and straw. And you can see that reflected in the religious denominationalism that's been burned away. But also the racism, which leads me to the next part. The Lord says, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So first you love God, and then as you continue to love him, he shares his love with you, and then you love you. That's why he has to be first, because he will forgive you. So you must forgive you. He will love you unconditionally. So you must love you unconditionally. He will believe in you. So you must believe in you. That's the way it goes. You can't skip a step. And you can't skip divine order. But then he says to love your neighbor as yourself. The Lord says he wants you to love your neighbor as yourself, which means you've got to be loving you. So God wants you to take those two healthy loves, his love and the love you have for you, and then share them with your neighbor. Now, coming out of the Greek, that word neighbor means a lot of things. But one of the things it means is the one next to you, the one next to you. People have taught over the years that neighbor means the person living in the house next to you or the person living in the apartment next to you or the person across the street. That's not all neighbor means. One of the translations of that word in the Greek means the one next to you. It's talking about your family. Did you know that? If you're married, who's closer to you than your spouse? Who lies next to you in the bed every night? Because the Bible says they too shall be one flesh. There's no other relationship that the Bible speaks about being one flesh. Now, I know the scripture says when you have sex with a prostitute or harlot, you take the members of Christ. That's talking about our bodies being one with the Lord and we're, we're making one. But sex is designed to take two and make it one. But the only relationship that God says he ordained for they two shall be one flesh is actually husband and wife. So you're not one flesh with your parents. You're not one flesh with your kids. You're not one flesh with your job. You're not one flesh with anything but your spouse. So... So the first thing you need to be sure is that you've got your family relationships right. And that lines in lines up with a prophetic word I got earlier this week about how God was saying now's the time to get your family relationships right. So in other words, when it says love your neighbor as yourself, that starts at home. Starts with your parents, starts with your siblings, starts with your children. And the one person you, you're closest to, the one that lies next to you, is your spouse. That's the only person you are one flesh with. How are you treating them? How are you loving them? Do you think God really wants to hear and see all your service and you think God really wants to receive all your prayers and all that and you're not treating your wife right? You're not treating your husband right? Right? This is what I under, I've come to understand this is what people don't understand. A lot of couples think they, they should be more blessed than they are. They don't, don't understand why their lives are stalled. Their lives are stalled because of how they treat their spouse. I personally have seen some people do that. I'm not going to call no names. I know y'all want me to call names because that would be a nice juicy scandal, wouldn't it? I'm not going to call no names, but I have seen some people who said they were Christian people and the way they've treated their spouses in public. They did some things in front of other people that I just thought were heinous, that were just abominable, that were just diabolical in nature. You can't treat your spouse like that and think God is going to bless you or your life. The Bible already told you that's going to burn up. We got to build with what he said building. He said, first, we put him first and we let him love us. And then we fall in love with him because he first loved us. But then we love ourselves. He forgives us, so we forgive. He believes in us, so we believe in ourselves. He's not holding grudges from 10 and 20 years ago. So we don't hold grudges from 10 and 20 years ago. Okay? And then you love the one next to you. Now, that also, by extension, covers, you know, somebody in the house next to you, but also racism. Think about all the racism that has resurfaced or never really went anywhere in America. Think about all the racism that's been a part of the news cycle, all the racism that's literally in the streets right now in 2020. You think God is pleased with that? You think that's of God? God told us we're supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves, not love your neighbor as long as they're the same color. Do you understand that we have missed it? Do you understand that if that's what you're doing as a believer, you're, you're putting wood, hay, and straw in your life, and it's going to burn up. If you think God is going to honor you turning up your nose at your fellow man because they're a different skin color from you, you have another thing coming. Okay? And all that what you did in the name of racism is going to burn up. It's not going to stand through the fire. It's not standing now, and it's not going to stand in the life to come. 
because God is never meant for you to, to be discriminatory with his love or his grace or his mercy or his kingdom because you don't like the skin color or the ethnicity of the person next to you or another person, your neighbor. Did you know that? It, you, oh, you can hear it so many times, people that call themselves Christians, but they hate people that are different from them. And you know they hate people that are different from them. They say it all the time. They don't make any bones about it, that they hate people that are different from them. And that ain't what the Lord said. It does not mean you agree, because remember God is first. It does not mean you agree with anything that goes against the word of God. But it does mean you can show love. Okay, let me ask you a question. Does God agree with everything we say and do? But he continues to love us anyway, doesn't he? Romans 5, 8, but God commends or demonstrates his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. There's the love of God. It's truly without condition. God gave Jesus to die for us while we were still in sin. That means his love is not based on how we act. God, Father God gave Jesus to die and Jesus gave his life and the Holy Spirit gave him the strength to die on that cross while we were yet sinners. That means his love is not based on how we act. So, is your love for yourself based on the way you're acting or do you love you unconditionally? And are you loving your husband and your wife unconditionally? Are you loving them based on how they act? And are you loving people based on demographics, age, uh, ethnicity, socioeconomic background, skin color, first language, dietary choices? Are you loving with condition? That is not the love of God. It, God does not agree with everything we say or do, but he does not cease to love us. That's what the Lord is saying here. You don't have to agree with what everybody says it does because God is first. We don't agree with anything that is against the word of God, but you can still show the love of God. And the Lord said to love your neighbor as yourself. So everybody that's trying to build something based on racism, it's going to burn up. So that's the opportunity. I hope I explained it well. That's the opportunity that God has given us October 4th of 2020. Everybody that wants to go forward in the word of God, you have a chance. And see, this is what I see missing but i you know i could be wrong because you know i don't i'm not privy to all the data i don't see every video i don't see everything but many times i see this missing in some places because we're not teaching people to love the lord and the lord said that's the first thing how can we call ourselves christian ministers and we're not teaching people the first thing and the first thing is to love the lord with all all of your emotional center all of your inner core all of your brain and your mind, which are not the same thing, your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions, and with all your strength, your body, what you do with your body. God says, I want you to love me with the totality of your being. That's the first thing. So if we're preaching about everything but loving the Lord, you can't, you can't matriculate in God's kingdom when you're doing everything but love the Lord. It's not going to stand. You can start, but it's not going to stand. You can start, but it's not going to stay. So the first thing, and is that in the scripture? That is in the scripture. I want to show you. That's why you hear me say all the time, I'm not making this stuff up. I want to show you in the scripture where it says that. It's in, I'm reading out the New International Version. <clears throat> I want to read to you a Revelation, last book in the New Testament and the Bible. Book of Revelation, written by Apostle John, Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 uh, through 4. To the angel, that word angel means messenger. So some people have translated it to the pastor or the apostle that sent one of the church in Ephesus, talking to the leader of the church. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds... I know what you're doing, your hard work and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Do you understand what the Lord just said? The Lord just said, I know your deeds. I know what you're doing. I know your hard work. I know your work ethic. I know our hard work ethic. I know how hard you're working and your perseverance. I know that you persevere. You don't give up. 
I know that you can't tolerate wicked people. You've tested people that turned out to be false apostles. You've persevered and you've been through great hardships for his name and you haven't grown weary. But then he said, but I have a problem. I hold this against you. You've forsaken the love you had at first. The Lord said, you don't love me like you used to. I'm not your first love like I used to be. He said, consider how far you have fallen. Consider how you used to love me versus how you treat me now, says the Lord. Then he says, repent and do the things you did at first. But then he says this. He says, if you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Do you understand that that is why some Christians die early? It's right there in the Bible. That's the New Testament. The Lord said, I'm going to come and remove your lampstand from its place, the light that you had in the world. God said, I'm going to remove it. Why would the Lord do that? Because you don't love him. So in other words, the Lord said all that other stuff, all that other stuff you did doesn't count if you don't love the Lord. And it's not enough for the Lord to continue to grant you life if you're doing all these things for him, but you don't really love him. I hope you get the ramifications of what I'm saying. I hope you get the impact of what I'm saying. Okay? So the first thing we have to do is love the Lord. And we have to love him according to the scriptures with all that we have. That's our first commandment. And the Lord says that if you don't, remember what it was like when you first got saved, the Lord is like, if you don't love me like that, you've got to repent and do that again. And if you're not doing that, the Lord said, I will come to you and remove your lampstand. That's why some Christians die early, if you didn't know that. Because they're serving God, and they're doing things for God, doing a whole bunch of stuff, but they don't love the Lord like they used to. They're not loving themselves, and they start treating people badly. Because when you, use that, you lose that love connection to Jesus, it shows up in how you treat yourself very, very quickly, and it shows up in how you treat other people. Then you start treating people really badly, which is a violation of the second commandment. You're no longer loving your neighbor as yourself like the Lord told you to. Okay? All right. So I hope you got the implications of that. Uh, I'm going to ask the Lord if there's anything else he wants me to say. I may need to revisit this. I'm going to ask the Holy Ghost if he wants me to re revisit it at some point because this teaching, at some point, because this teaching is deep. And this teaching is life-changing. So I want to build my life on that, where I love the Lord, and I want to teach other people to love the Lord because that's the gold, that's the silver, that's the precious stones, that's the only thing that's going to stand. Because you see right there in Revelation chapter 2 that if you're doing all these things for Jesus but you don't love him, he's going he's gonna to snuff your life out early. And he said it doesn't count. All them good works ain't enough to allow God to keep you to get, keep going if you don't love him. They don't negate the fact that you're not loving him like you once did, no matter how much you're doing for him. You understand? I'm going to show you one more scripture, very famous scripture that backs up everything that I'm saying, which is why you have to stack, stack scripture against other scripture. You don't take scripture out of context, but you also have to stack scripture against other scripture. Okay? Okay? Matthew 7, 22 and 23. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? How could they do that? That takes faith. That's how. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, ye evildoers. I never knew you. We never had an intimate relationship. We never had a love relationship. So all the things that they did weren't enough. Mm, that, that's mind blowing to me. Okay, so I got to wrap it up because I'm uh, coming up on my hour time. So uh, uh, let me go in the spirit and ask the Holy Ghost if there's, if there's anything else he wants me to say. Okay, I think that's it. All right, thank you so much. Thanks to those of you that watch me live. Thanks to those of you that are listening on the podcast. Thanks to those of you that are watching this YouTube video. Thanks to those of you that watch me on Periscope and simultaneously on Twitter. And thanks to those of you that watched on Facebook Live. God bless you so much. I will be here this Thursday, the second Thursday. The second Thursday is No More Genius. So I'll be here this Thursday, 7 o'clock p.m. for my next installment of No More Genies, where we talk about getting rid of our genie concept of God. Of God 
and we get into what the word really says, then I'll be here next Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Again, I apologize for coming on late today. I'm trying out some new software to try to get a better resolution to the picture, to the video, because the other video was printing in a very low resolution. So I'm trying to get a sharper picture and a sharper resolution for all of my videos. So that's why I was late today. But I was only like two or three minutes late. So uh, I'm sorry if you didn't hang around. I always hang around if I'm not right on at 2.30 uh, because I'm having some technical challenges. Okay? All right. Amen and amen. Thank you. God bless. And I will see you next time next week uh, on Thursday for No More Genies and next Sunday for the next live prophetic word. God bless.